my deep pleasure to introduce our speaker today, uh, James Scotty Scott. Uh, Scotty is one of my favorite speakers here at the fellowship. He reminds me a lot of Tom Baker. You know, he's able to take great spiritual truths, profound spiritual truths that we need to hear, and he infuses the truth with humor, which gets our attention and makes that truth go in deeper. And uh, that's, I think, Scotty's one of his great gifts. He spent a lot of his time in public school system where he will go to um, the kids in the school and teach them about poetry. They call him the loud poetry guy. And uh, he, he teaches kids and gives them an appreciation of poetry. And uh, he works uh, also at Unity Renaissance. He's the educational director there. Uh, and uh, he's working on becoming a minister uh, with the, uh, the requirements for becoming a Unity minister. So it's once again, it's my deep pleasure to welcome Scotty. Let's give him a fellowship welcome. That's the one thing I'm learning as I go through these various medical issues is that you don't know that your strength is going until you pick up something that you picked up about six months before and it was not a problem then. Okay, you guys wait here. I've been having fun. I made sure I didn't take my hand, put, bring my hat up with me. I wanted you guys to see, four months ago, they changed drugs. And they have hair. Somebody told me today, they said, you look like Napoleon from the side. I said, is that because of my height or what? And I had the oddest, delightful conversation, very brief, last Sunday as I was leaving church, my daughter, who's almost 17, was with me, and we have a gentleman there, um, Alan, who is autistic and delightful guy to talk to. Um, and speaks from the heart. I mean, you just, it's, what comes out is what comes out and he believes it. And so we were all three going through the doors at the same time. And Alan said, Scotty, I just want to know, I'm, I was sorry to hear about your cancer. And I'm thinking to myself, Alan, you heard about it over a year and a half ago. <laughs> But I didn't want to bring that part of it into it. And then he said, and I also want you to know that I'm really glad you're not dead. <laughs> and I said, Alan, so am I. <laughs> so, but that was just, and, and I don't know anybody else who would have said that to me and not turned beet red afterwards. <laughs> but not Alan, he, he was sincere, he came straight from the heart. So I look for stuff like that, what's coming straight from the heart. So, so I got, I had thoughts this week. Um, one, of, one of my, I think one of the most popular lines of, from a movie, probably about 20 years ago now, was that, that line in Forrest Gump, where Forrest always, uh, Mama always said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. You know? I don't know what I got in here, but I'm going to open it up and find out. For any of you who are vegetarians, I will tell you that you're probably safe with a box of chocolates. You will probably not violate your code of eating. Um, oh, yeah. But see, I disagree with Forrest because, and this is what I bought this, and then I hoped it was right. It has the map, the chocolate map. <laughs> So I'm going to disagree with Forrest's mom, because I know what I'm going to get. I'm going to look at this map and go, oh look, coconut, oh look. So, so I, oh that smells good up there. Mmm, okay, put it down, don't start yet. So I wanted to clarify something, because one of the things that we always need to learn about is what is the truth, the real truth in a situation. So I'm going to tell you, Life is not a box of chocolates. Life is a box of cereal. That's not as much fun as having 47 different chocolates, but you can count on this. You, you know what it's gonna taste like, you know what it's gonna do. So, and, and you've got, what have you got out front for after the service? Are you do, you're doing it like a luncheon today? I, I'm willing to donate. Both the box of chocolates and a box of life <laughs> for your lunch today. So, 
Let's look at your notes and see what you're going to talk about. Okay. So, I was discussing Jesus with somebody recently, and the word came out about Jesus being a teacher, a rabbi. But I realized we can all do that, because that's really what he was here to tell us, was that within each of us is the Spirit of God. And so, and when he said, all these things that I do, you shall do, and greater works than these shall you do. So he didn't come into this world to go, ta-da! You know, he came into this world to guide you to what powers you have and what things you can do for others. And so that to me was great because he didn't just teach by getting out the instructor's manual and reading the highlighted parts to you. He demonstrated. He got out there and he showed you how to be the ultimate that you can be. And so a friend of mine yesterday, in fact, he said, he said, I wanted you to know, he said, uh, he's just started having some medical issues. And he said, I'm stepping into these right now just because I've watched you go through what you've gone through for the last two years. He said, I'm stepping into my challenges with a much better frame of mind than I ever thought I would. He said, and it's not that you told me all this. He said, but I've watched you. And you have taught me by doing as you do. And knowing that you are exactly where you want to be and exactly going the way you want to go. And I th said, thank you. I, you know, I, I didn't realize I was doing that. You know, but I guess if you then look at what did Jesus do? He didn't just stand on a mountain and talk to 5,000 people. He taught by what he did, by who he was, by how he reacted to situations. And I said, well, we could all do that. We could all learn who we are at our core and be that powerful and be that teacher for each other. You know, have you, have you learned from somebody else? And the little snippets that you learn, that you piece together that become your life, then right after you put that together, you don't realize it, but you then start to share that, I guess, upgraded version of yourself with everyone around you. And in so doing, now you've added to that tapestry. You've made, you've made it bigger, you've made it better, you've made it more colorful for everyone. And so even when we go, as we start now, the, the season of nonviolence is beginning at the end of January and we're celebrating Martin Luther King's Day uh, for what we'll celebrate it tomorrow but to take a look at it and go this is what the world eventually will be is that there will come a time when we are all at peace with each other when we all are full of joy for each other and when we're all happy for each other put on a happy face but you don't, I'm not sure how this is going to, you don't just put it on your face. Does that make any sense? doesn't to me, but I hope it does to you. But you can generate the God essence that's within you, that you've actually got kind of blocked up. And when you generate that, you generate it for others. And when they'll generate it back to you. And we start, and we, every time we turn around, I think the worst thing about some of the violence that's going on in the world, I don't think we have any more than we've ever had. I just think we communicate it better. You know, I think people find out about the bad stuff in another country, another place that centuries ago would have taken you two years to find out. Now you can go on the internet and find it out in 30 seconds. So we are becoming wise about all of the world faster. But I, I don't think it's any worse out there. I think, I think we are starting to weave each other together into one big human race. And in so doing, I think that that's, hopefully that starts to move faster and we commute that faster with each other as well. Because I do think that we are becoming a, a better human race. I think that we're becoming um, a little bit more convinced in pockets here and pockets there, 
who we are at our core. And in having a, who we are at our core, we have the ability then to expand on everything. And at some point, we're even going to realize that who we are at our core isn't confined to this planet. That there are other places, other pieces, other sentient beings, other beings, we don't know what they are, but they're out there. And we're connected to them as well. How do you teach that to your kids? How do you teach somebody on another planet, in another part of the galaxy? Well, you don't do it by picking up the phone. Because we've got two different kinds of phones. Whatever theirs is and whatever ours is. But what you do it is you communicate it with that piece of spirit that's at your core. Because that's the ultimate strand of connection that we all have. So whether it's Jesus demonstrating as well as teaching, or it's you demonstrating as well as teaching, it's that wonderful connection that we are all here to teach. Look at all of the major religions in the world. They were all founded by a teacher. Somebody who started all they, they didn't start. Jesus didn't say, I know, let's make everybody Christians. And that didn't work out that way. Buddha didn't say, let's make them all Buddhists. They just started teaching truth as they saw it. And that teaching started to connect. The strands started to connect. People started to realize that they weren't individuals separate from spirit. But instead, they were individually clothed pieces of spirit. I remember back in the 80s, there were, we, we, there were a lot of holograms out there. Holograms were fun. They were images embedded in glass. And the most fun part of it was, if you dropped it and it broke, each piece of the hologram contained the complete image of the hologram. So you could drop it, break it into a hundred pieces, now you got a hundred images instead of one. And that's what we're learning about the spirit that we have inside us. Is that spirit, wherever it is, spirit in the piano, spirit in the floor, spirit in the light, that spirit within it has what we would call spirit, the elemental element of the universe is in it. And wherever spirit is, You've got all of spirit. So when we talk about being connected to each other and connected to God, what we've got there is that we've got a, a, a world of connection and we've got that element that underlies it all, that brings us together. And we go, ooh. And I'm learning more and more about that each day. So that as I learn it, I get a little wiser, I get a little more connected with each other, and we keep looking, saying, we're still going to have pockets of violence. We're still going to have pockets of disconnect. But not always. We get a little better. We get a little closer. We teach and we learn all at the same time. And sometimes we call it life. And sometimes it's just a box of chocolates. <laughs> but I will tell you, if you get a box of chocolates that doesn't have a map inside, you need to get better chocolates. <laughs> They're a lot more fun when you know exactly what you're picking. I just saw somebody over the Christmas holidays went to visit with some friends and their 25-year-old daughter was there. And the mom had gotten this box of chocolates. Must have had 50, 75 pieces of chocolate in No map. <laughs> so the daughter, the 25-year-old, heads to the dining room table and is hunched over the dining room table with this box of chocolates, and she's going, no, I don't like that one. No, I don't like that one. She must have done this with like 10 pieces of chocolate out. I said, you know, this was my house, and that was my child. I'm going up and going, pow! <laughs> Find a better way to handle that. So, so I said, the next time, somebody move up when you buy chocolates for this person, and that way the daughter doesn't have to eat parcels of all these chocolates. So you'll know better what you're getting, you'll know better what you're giving, and you'll enjoy that much more of that moment of your life. 
So I will take this back to my seat, but I'll take it out there. Um, as I often say at the end of my talks, today's a great day to go out and make miracles for other people. You have that ability. You've always had that ability. And what's going to happen is you're going to be surprised by who shows up in your life and makes a miracle for you. So, namaste.